All right, we're just gonna have a go with a little 6.5 here. Right on the money. Not terrible. All right, pretty good at 200. Let's see, I'm gonna go for the popper down there at three. Eight inches. Yeah. Yeah, you're favoring a little bit low of center. Keep stacking them right in there. All right, gopher. Right in the belly. Nothing is safe. All right, how about the uh, <laughs> the coyote right in the face? Do it. Did I hit him? Uh, I think he clipped his ear. <laughs> well, that's all right. He <laughs> won't be able to hear me coming next time. <laughs> uh, guys, welcome back. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Uh, today, we've got a really interesting gun that we're gonna be talking about a little bit here. This is a new rifle from CMMG. This is one of their Mark III's. So it's, it's their basically 308 action, but in a 6.5 uh, Creedmoor. You know, we've only recently, and I'm talking very recently, been exposed to 6.5 Creedmoor as a caliber. And uh, it's definitely growing on me a good bit. Um, the AR world has kind of become a little bit stagnant. A lot of folks know that people are looking for innovation and new things in the AR world. And let's face it, sometimes a new caliber can kind of breathe a little bit of life into what uh, a platform can really do for you. And uh, it's really smart of them to go the route of uh, doing a 6.5 Creed. You know, in terms of the 6.5s, one of the uh, calibers that I've always been interested in is the 6.5 Grendel. And then I learned about the 6.5 Creed more. And then CMMG was nice enough to send us one of these guns a little bit early to get kind of a first look at. Unfortunately, the rain has been uh, blowing us out for the last couple of weeks here. We haven't been able to get it out until today. So this video is to serve as kind of a first look um, at this particular gun. Uh, they offer it in a variety of different uh, configurations. Um, the basic configuration has like just a standard A2 stock, military trigger, basic hardware, things like that. And then as you step up into the uh, better varieties of this gun, uh, this is kind of like the decked out version that we've got right here. Uh, starting from the rear, you've got a Magpul uh, PRS Gen 3 uh, stock, which is great. You've got a, a Magpul Mo Grip, Got a Geisley Super Semi Automatic uh, trigger, which is an excellent trigger. You got the burnt bronze Cerakote on the upper and lower and rail system. The rail system is uh, one of the M, uh, R, RML 15s. It's a 15 inch rail that uh, CMMG makes. It's a 24 inch stainless barrel. It's also available in a 20 inch barrel if you choose to go that route. It's threaded 5 8 by 24 for all your muzzle devices and everything like that. It's got their SV muzzle brake, and yes, I wrote a cheat sheet on the table because I can't remember that kind of stuff. But it's got their SV muzzle brake, and boy, is it loud. But it does help uh, with those recoil forces a really you know, good bit. Uh, it does make the gun a little bit louder. Uh, so, you know, it's a, it's a medium-ish contour barrel. It's not a super heavy barrel. It is turned a bit, uh, cuts down on the weight just a bit. Uh, the burnt bronze Cerakote is, uh, is an additional fee if you want to, you know, they usually come in black. Um, it's basically an AR, guys, okay? I'm not telling you anything you don't know. There are a lot of little features that if you go over their website, you can learn about some of the little, uh, you know, technicalities and things that we're not going to discuss here. You got a full uh, 1913 pick rail across the top, which is great for all of your optics uh, needs and things like that. We've got a spur one-piece 30 millimeter, uh, zero MOA base on here. Excellent, excellent, excellent quality product. Cannot say enough good things about those spurs. Those guys are doing a great job with their uh, with their mounts. And a friend of mine recently turned me on to these mounts, and I tell you, I, I really love them. Uh, they're excellent. Uh, we've got a Leopold Mark IV. This is a 4 to 14 uh, with the TMR reticle in it. 
This particular optic is not produced for uh, civilian sales anymore. They're only making this one for the military. Uh, but there are some awesome options out there, such as the LRP as a new optic from Leupold, which is actually, in my opinion, a little bit better than the original Mark IVs and a lot less money. So you're definitely saving money with like the long range precision Leupolds as opposed to the older Mark IVs. Not to say the Mark IV is not a good optic, it is, but just putting that out there because we all work hard for our money. You want to get the best you can for the money. So I understand that, you know, it is what it is in that regard. Feeds from, uh, you know, basically 10 and 20 shot boxes. These are just regular old P mags, uh, AR-10 P mags that you can stuff your 6.5 Creed more in. Haven't tried any of the higher capacity mags other than a 20. Uh, the gun ships with a 20 round magazine. Uh, one thing I want to mention is ammunition. I made it a, a purpose in this video. I wanted to shoot the gun with the most available ammo I could find for the lowest price I could find. So I went to a lot of the big box stores, and for one, I found it hard to even find 6.5 Creedmoor ammo in stock. Okay, so the ammo that was in stock was either $45 a box, or I found some of this Hornady black here. And I'm not trying to plug Hornady or anything, because I just went and bought the ammo. I didn't think anything of it, but they're offering this black line, which is supposed to be kind of, I guess, a lower priced option. Uh, this ammo was like $21 a box, so you're just over a dollar a shot for 20 rounds. It's a 140 grain boat tail hollow point. I found the Hornady black, and I also found uh, some Winchester uh, white box and a 125 soft point, and it was $19.99 a box. And that was the cheapest ammo I could find. All the other ammo is two to $2.50 a shot. So just keep that in mind. If you're gonna go the 6.5 Creed route, you're gonna spend some money to shoot it. There's no surplus 308 ammo, or you know, it's not like surplus 308 ammo where you can buy a battle pack and go out and play with it. Guys, this ammo is expensive. Uh, I can definitely see where it's going to be a hand loading uh, option for a lot of people, including myself, if I'm going to continue shooting this caliber. Um, we did shoot some initial groups with the gun, very, very preliminary, getting about one minute groups out of the gun, which is not terrible. But remember, this is the cheapest ammo I could find, and we grouped the gun with the cheapest ammo we could possibly find because I'm trying to give a little bit more of a realistic expectation. Because what's somebody going to do? They're going to buy a gun. They're going to buy an optic and amount, and they're going to try to save a little money and get some just cheaper ammo to go out and have some fun and break their gun in with. So I wanted to give a realistic accuracy expectation. Now, you could see there, we were stacking those rounds right there in on the little gopher. I mean, probably shooting about a three-inch group at 300 yards. So definitely capable of taking small game and little critters. I could see this gun being really well at home for uh, a varmint hunting rifle, or maybe some of you guys want to get into like precision rifle shooting. You don't want to buy like a really fancy five or six thousand dollar bolt gun. You might want to drop a few grand on something like this and have something that's kind of cool. Um, the 6.5 Creedmoor is awesome because this bullet uh, diameter is great. And a 6.5 and a 140 grain, you've got a really high ballistic coefficient over 308 uh, for their bullet weight. So like say I ran 150 grain 308 versus a 140 grain uh, 6.5 Creed. I'm actually going to get really good bunking of the wind uh, out of this 6.5 Creed because of the excellent ballistic coefficient. You're getting really good velocities. Um, nice thing about this Hornady Black is most of the brass you're going to buy that's of any reasonable quality is probably going to cost you, you know, 60 to 80 cents a piece anyway. So this is a great way to just shoot up a bunch of this ammo, save the brass. And for some of you that want to get into hand loading, that's an excellent option. The reason I'm spending so much time talking about 6.5 Creedmoor is because it's a new caliber to us. And guys, these groups that we shot earlier are very preliminary. This gun, I know for a fact, will shoot better. And trust me, we're going to do some hand loading. We're going to play around with a bunch of different ammo. So expect probably a more detailed 6.5 Creedmoor uh, ammo test in the future. And you're going to learn along with us as uh, in terms of what it takes to get these things to really shine. That 24-inch barrel, you're getting really good velocity. And not really with a ton of weight. You know, this gun is not quite as heavy as you might would think. Um, that's really the gun in a nutshell. I mean, you can see there um, that it shoots great. I'm not going to spend a ton of time shooting at 300 because I almost feel like we're not even challenging this gun at all at 300 yards. The real test is going to be if we can take this rig right here up to the tower, shoot out to about 600 yards, and if Chad can keep, you know, all the shots within five or six inches, then we'll know that our expectation of a one minute gun is pretty much validated there. You know, maybe Chad will end up shooting it into a four inch group at 600 yards. And if that's the case, you're getting down in like the, you know, 0.75 uh, minute 
area, which is definitely capable enough for any serious work on varmints or critters, or just having some fun at the range with your friends and just enjoying a really soft shooting caliber. Uh, the muzzle device is really effective. The recoil impulse with the long rifle gas system is great. Uh, it does not kick hardly at all. Very, very minimal recoil. I would say even less than a 308. Um, it just doesn't really have that sharp kick like some 308s can. This thing is set up really nice. The gun probably is maybe a tad over gassed from the factory. Uh, that's one thing that Chad and I both uh, made mention of. It is slinging the brass a little bit deliberately forward and not quite so out at that angle. It might be just slightly over gassed, but you know, not a big deal. We've seen that to be the case in a lot of CMMG's guns. Uh, they tend to be a little more over gassed, and I would imagine the reason they do that is probably because they want utmost reliability. You'd rather the gun have a little more gas than it needs and know that it's going to run just about anything you can throw in it. And you don't really know what kind of gun uh, ammo that they test fire their guns with at the factory. They might use some hot stuff, some light stuff, and everything in between, and they're setting their gas system up to be able to run anything they can throw in it. So uh, that's pretty much everything uh, on the gun in a nutshell that people are going to really care about. Uh, we don't have a lot of a variety of ammo. We only have the Hornady Black, and we've got some of the 125 grain Winchesters. And guys, this is an initial first look. I just wanted to spend some time covering the ammo because I felt it was important for people to know that if you're going to get into this caliber, you need to know what cost you're looking at and everything. Um, let's go up the hill, have a little bit of fun. I'm going to get Chad behind the gun. And uh, I mean, just 20 rounds in, uh, you know, we did shoot some groups, but 20 rounds in, boring accuracy at 300 yards. I mean, I, I'll probably load up one more mag and just show you again and run another big stream and then we're going to run a, our string rather and we'll run up the hill here. So let's do it. All right, well the little 6.5 Creedmoor CMMG is really delivering the goods. I'm going to shoot 20 more real quick here before we go up the hill. And I want to mention something about the tactical milling reticle and just this style of reticle in general is that the flat shooting nature of a 6.5 uh, Creedmoor you don't really have to have quite as much dope to get out to longer ranges. So that makes this type of optic great for some of you that don't want to dial and you just want to hold. Uh, you've got, you know, a good solid five mils built in uh, to the optic. So that really gives you the ability to get on out there. I mean, with a 600 yard shot, I'm no expert and I haven't figured out the math yet. Chad seems to think maybe about three, uh, three mils will get it out there. I'm thinking about two and a half or two. Uh, whereby with his 308, with his hot 175 grain load at six, it's taking him, uh, what'd you say, about 3.8 or four mils uh, to get out? 3.8 to four. Yeah, so about four mils to get out with 175 grain uh, match load out of a 308. I'm thinking that it's gonna be about half that, which makes it a very flat shooting option. Just something that's important to mention. All right, I'm going for the go or the uh, coyote. The coyote? The coyote. The coyote and the foss? Maybe. All right. Uh, right there in the jawbone. Right in the nose. Uh, just under his jaw. Right under his jaw again. Same place, like right under his neck. Right under. What are you doing? Um, he's keeping the same point of aim the whole time. Just like um, it was hold, on. Bring, bring your point of aim up just a tiny bit. So you're going right under his neck. I swear, it looks like it's going right under his jaw. There you go. There you go, all right there in his face. Yep. Same place, just low. There you go. Shoot that gopher in the face, come on. Right in the neck. There you go. Just past the front of his jaw there. Yep. It'll put him in there, man. I'm telling you. Very, very consistent. And that I'm almost wondering if target a, hit. it is. You know, it's, it's an odd size target. And I think that's one of the real challenges of a gun like this. But enough talking. 300 is kind of child's play for this gun. Let's back out to six and have a little more fun. All right, we're going to take a few shots from uh, 600 yards with the 6.5 Creedmoor CMMG here. Shot this gun a little bit earlier, just preliminary, just bore siding it and grouping it. And like Eric said, the groups were kind of meh, so-so, but we only have one type of ammo and this gun really isn't broken in or anything yet. We literally have taken the first few shots out of this gun today with you guys. So we're gonna, you wanna place a lunch bet on, on the closer, dope? On the dope. So I said three mils. 
Yeah. And Eric said like two or two and a half. Which one are you going to go with? Two and a half is pretty close to mine. Yeah, that is pretty close. I'm going to say, uh, you know, screw it. I'm going to say it's a two mil hold, man. All right. Well, I'm yep. going to try. I, I think she's flat. All right. I'm going to try a three just for the heck of it. You okay. know, my, I've noticed that a lot of factory ammo is a little bit anemic. You're probably right. To say the least. I'm probably being a little overzealous. I don't know. It is pretty flat, man. After shooting 6.5 by 47 a little while back. Was, we, uh, uh, we will certainly see. Yep. All right. This thing is loud, but ooh, it purrs like a kitten though. All right, 600 yardos. I know that uh, that seven millimeter Mauser is a pretty flat caliber. We shooting out of the Mauser that day seemed to be pretty laser beam. Oh yeah. All right, I'm gonna hold three mils. And with the TMR, it's nice because you got half minute or half mil increments. You got five mils that you can hold on the uh, on the reticle, which is pretty cool. All right, cool. so what happens if my two is wrong and your three is wrong and it's two and a half? Well, I we guess we're, win? I guess we just pay for our own lunches. All right. <laughs> I'll, I'll go for that. All right, let's see. So three mils. No wind, really, right? No wind. You should be right on it, man. Hopefully. Uh, foot under the plate. Oh, man, we were both way off. We were both way off. Shoot. So, so your dope on a 175 hot hand load was like four mils? Out of your 20, uh, here's a 24, 24 inch. Yeah, 24 inch gun. Um, yeah, I've got a 175 grain hand load that's super hot, but it's real consistent. And we were holding like 3.8 or 4 mils out of his gun. My 20 inch gun, I had to hold like 4.3, 4.4 mils. Uh, hold four and go. Yeah. So, yeah, this, I, th I think that this definitely uh, is a platform that we're going to hand load for. Give, and give it gonna... four mils and uh, poke it in there and see what mm -hmm. happens prod it right in there. All right, four mils. <sighs> yep. A so, good, well-centered shot that you're on the bottom edge of the gong. Now give it uh, Give it four and a half. Yeah, so we're at 4.2, 4 3, about 4.4 .4 mils. Yeah, I, I just give it just four and a half. Okay. Run it. <sighs> you should be right in the center. Better shoot a group. Mm -hmm. Good. Do that again. Good triangulation there, Chad. Keep shooting. Definitely stacking them in there. I, I would say. Yeah, you're on about a minute gun still. So yep. that's probably a six inch group. Okay, well, we've got so an eight inch uh, popper. That's, a, that's MOA all the way out. Yep. All right, well, I'm going to go for the eight inch popper then. Yeah, you should be able to hit it. Okay. You, you know might what? Be favoring slightly right. I think it's about time to retire our poor little bag. <laughs> I'm going to use my little Coltac bag here. And see How if long that... have we had that bag? 10 years or longer than that? Longer than I care to remember because it makes me feel old. That's right. All right. Whenever you're ready. A little gun shooting pretty good. All right, so I'm gonna hold 4.4 .4 and slightly left. Are you aiming at the center of the gong at 4.4? .4? Um, hold 4.5, and then just hold like barely off, like split the the gong by a third to the left. All right, so I'm going for the eight inch popper there. Yep. Good right shot, the right on the top. Yep. Yep, you're on it. Up, oh, I right pulled over the top. I pulled that shot. It went just right. Oh, did it? Yeah, I saw it in the uh, in the optic. Yeah, that's, well, that's a fast one, bullet. I mean, it gets down there. It does. That's one cool thing about this uh, caliber. You know, Eric was mentioning the light recoil impulse. You can literally just let the shot go, and even with it being slightly over gassed, I mean, we could adjust the uh, spring weight a little bit and get those. Uh, brass casings coming out at about three, four o'clock here, and it even softened it up from there. But you can literally see the bullet trace through the optic and see it impact downrange with no problem. I mean, yeah, what a you, wonderful You would have caliber. no problem hitting a, a coyote or any kind of small animal at that distance. If oh, you're heck no. hunting. Yep. Speaking of small animal. Oh, yeah. Well, I got that coyote down. Let me take one more shot at the eight inch. Go ahead. <sighs> Thank you.
Yep. Okay. You're keeping about a six to eight inch group, which is pretty consistent with uh, the accuracy we're seeing at 100 yards with this thing. Yep. Man, all this PPE, we're going to have to put a can on this thing. Yeah, it's loud. Oh, it's loud. All right, let's see. So, coyote. Let's just do a center mass shot there. Can the downrange camera see the coyote? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. It can see all. I see it's well hidden down there. Right over his back. It what? Like. Right yeah. over his back? That's what it looked like to me. Shoot again. There you go, right in the neck. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a, a dead dog down. That would have been a lethal shot. It's like it might have cheated just over his backbone. A coyote is a hard target to shoot. It is an oddball target for sure. You would have got him and took his face right off. Oh, yeah. Oh, right over his yeah, backbone. Yeah, I saw that. Barrel might be getting a little hot, you know, and all. Still breaking this thing in, though. You know what? All right, I've had enough of the coyote. I'm going to shoot that gopher. Go for it. All right, so the one on go the right. Go for it. I'm going to go for the one on the right side there in all the right. dirt. Just in front of his nose. Yep. Boy, that thing's loud. Oh, right in front of his belly. Yep. You're barely missing to the right. Right in front of his belly All again. All three of those shots landed in about the size of a Coke can. Dude. Aim small, miss small, they say, right? Yep. There you go. Yeah. You hit down uh, at his feet, knocked his feet out from All under right. him. Not too shabby, though. There you go. Good center mass hit. All right, awesome. All right, well, I'm going to finish on a high note there. I'm going to turn it back over to you. This thing is really a joy to shoot. Um, very soft recoil, highly accurate ammo. I mean, a one-minute gun is what we're seeing right now, but we've seen other reports that these guns are capable of a little bit better accuracy, which we're going to test out in the future. But, man, so far, I'm a fan. All right. Come on. Johnny Ringo. Here we go. 6.5 Creed, 600 yards. This shouldn't be too hard. Watching Chad shoot makes it look easy, but. Some days. Yep, some days he makes it look easy. Most days. And the wind picked up for you, so. The wind picked up, that's fine. Well, that Boy, would be a good test. Boy, the wind test. really picked up. That this would be is... a good testament to that load. I mean, even if it drops, it should have a pretty high BC and get through that wind pretty good, but hey, we'll find out. Agreed. What's it going for? Uh, big gong? Call it. You tell me. Why don't you just uh, go for the big gong real quick and just hold it 4.4, 4.5. See what happens. Okay, yeah. Wind caught it good. It, it landed like right off the edge at like 3 o'clock. Yeah, boy, that wind. All right. This is fun. Yep. So you're up there at the top of the gong. You see your shot? Yeah. Yep. Kind of vertical stringing. But... Dead nut center. Yep. Man. I mean, with that, that wind's toting it a bit, but not too bad. No, not at all. It's drifting it over about six inches. And it's probably, what, 10, maybe 12 mile an hour wind we got blowing? Oh, it's a decent wind right now. <laughs> all right, I'll tell you what. Since we're, we're getting all winded here, how about a eight inch popper? Go for it. Oh yeah. Okay, yeah, the, <laughs> it, that one hit left. Just left again. That was just left and slightly low of the center of the round. Yep. 
Yeah, that wind is playing a few games here. Love it's games. It's a fun gun to shoot, man. Let's see. How about the half-sized D28 over there on the left? Yeah, it's pretty well unscathed. Find yeah, we'll see if I, can, if I can hit him once or twice here. Yep. Uh, that one may have gone just slightly low left. Yep. I mean, it looks like it's pretty much just putting them right in there. Uh, you're shooting about a, about an eight inch group, give or take. So, yep. You know. And then you were keeping most of the shots on the eight inch round when you were hitting it. So that's pretty consistent with uh, both of our results there. I'd say so. I mean, right yep. now with that ammo, it's about a minute gun. But like I said, you know, yeah, it's yeah. seen better. Yeah, yeah, not bad. I mean, a little bit of wind. It's not really playing too much heck on that 140 uh, going down range there. Uh, guys, this was meant to be kind of a preliminary look at the Mark III uh, here in 6.5 Creedmoor. This is a new caliber to us, and anytime we take on a, a weird or unique or different caliber than what we're used to shooting, you know, we kind of come from the 308 crowd, so we tend to try to kind of look at it from a little bit of a standpoint of trying to learn along with you guys. Some of you guys are probably new to this caliber, as we are. This is very, very preliminary results, guys. Uh, we're not trying to say that this is the uh, best that this gun will do or the best that we can do, uh, but it gives us something to go on. I'm going to um, definitely agree with Chad that this uh, ammo is definitely loaded on the anemic side. A 140 grain uh, boat tail hollow point shouldn't take, you know, four, what, 4.4 minutes to get out at 600 when yep. 175 will do it in 3.8. So I know this, this cartridge shoots flatter than most 308s does. Well, remember that's a hand load too. And that I mean, is a hand load and it's cooking up. So yep. I think what that, that tends to say with this 24 inch barrel, I think we can get some pretty wicked velocities. We are gonna play around with this caliber a little bit. Uh, we are going to try some hand loading. We're going to try some nuclear bomb hand loads in it and, uh, and see what we can really, really get out of this 24 inch barrel and get that maximum velocity going down range. And we'll suppress the gun a little bit in a future video. Uh, this is a very new rifle. We just wanted to take a moment to talk about it, expose it to the world. Not a lot of people know that it exists yet. This rifle's not been out very long. So we thought we'd get it out to the range, have some fun with it today. Thank you very much for watching today's video. We hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we love what we do and we'd love to get out here and showcase these guns for you and we hope that we did a, a halfway respectable job of showcasing the gun and what an average person can uh, get done with this particular rifle. So thank you very much. We'll see you next time. Stay tuned for more. We got more gun gripes on the way, more firearms facts, uh, more gun reviews, reloading. Uh, I know we've been kind of skimping on the reloading and gunsmithing content, but we got more on the way. And uh, guys, thank you very much. We'll see you next time.